In this video we're going to talk about factor analysis. Factor analysis is basically using the same ideas of PCA but for categorical variables. Do not confuse this idea with correspondence analysis. Correspondence analysis for two entry tables. Here I'm talking about variables which are completely categorical. But instead of talking about just factor analysis, I'm going to use an extension of that which is called hybrid factor analysis or factor analysis of mixed data or FAMD. And the idea of this tool is that I'm not going to care about the type of variable. The only thing I'm going to do is try to combine categorical and quantitative variables. How I'm going to do that? I'm going to do some transformation of the data and I'm going to show you how to do that in R. But the idea is that we're going to standardize quantitative variables and for categorical variables that are non-binary, we're going to create dummy variables and those dummy variables are going to be treated as numerical. So essentially, factor analysis of mixed data is the same as PCA, but transforming the categorical variables in, our, in, our, in the right manner. By the way, I'm referring here to what is called exploratory factor analysis, which is the unsupervised version of factor analysis. But there are all the flavors, like confirmatory factor analysis that is used to train some data and try to find uh, correlations between variables and, and try to explain how those correlations produce the output, which is already known. I'm not going to do this tutorial in real time because now that then you can see how the way I think and I think it can be more useful than going through a code. So I'm going to load factor mine R and also factor extra. Okay, I'm going to use a data set which is called Wine and that I mentioned before. It comes with that library factor mine R in that book. And essentially we have 20, 21 wines and different categories of that wine. So essentially, if you take a look at the data. Uh, sorry. You can see that we have different properties like nuance, uh, alcohol, balance, bitterness, harmony, uh, and all that. I would say a lot of crap. Okay, let's, let's do this analysis here. First of all, I'm going to store that information into a library. Let's call this factor analysis, FMD, and I'm going to call this function. And I'm going to use wine. I'm going to say don't plot anything. And here we go. Now, first of all, we should explore the eigenvalues. Uh, sorry. Uh, what is happening here? Okay. This is a problem with real time. Here we go. Now you can see the eigenvalues. And you can see that we have five components. Forget about the scale. What I, what I like to check is that how many of them do I need in order to have more than 70% variance. And in this case, we have three components. Okay, let's plot this another way. Remember, FB's eigenvalue. MD. And you can see that. So after three, I'm in this plateau. So this is the elbow. And again, you can you can use the first two ones because there is a huge gap between the second and the third, but you can th take three dimensions because the elbow is actually here. Okay, let's explore the variables. So I'm going to do I'm going to do actually a, a core plot, core plot, and I'm going to plug in here this variable, variable coordinates. Okay, and now we have a good idea of what's going on. So you can see that the first dimension is a size, a scale factor, because all the coefficients are, have the same color, and also the second and the third. Uh, but basically, you can see that the first one is not going to be very good trying to discriminate variables, because almost all of them are represented, and the second dimension are, are going to let us classify a little bit better this, this data set, because we have only a few ones in which we have uh, large circles. Uh, but in this case, what is interesting is that soil, which is a categorical variable, is, is the one which is highly correlated. So this is why it's important sometimes to have both categorical and quantitative variables. Okay, let's do some plotting to confirm these intuitions. D, variance, and, D. and here I have to use an argument. I want to use, uh, you, can, you can have the description here, okay? So you can plot the, var the, the variable, the quantitative variables or the qualitative variables. So if you plot the variables, all of them, then you can see the typical graph. I'm going to say repel equals true. It's not, it's not a big data set, so you can do that. And you can see that uh, everything seems to be more or less mixed. So let's repeat that only for quantitative variables. Variables. And you can see this sort of arrow bars. And again, you can see that clearly the first dimension is a size factor because the only thing that is negatively correlated is 
probably these two arrows, acidity and plant. What about qualitative variables? Here you can see that the first dimension is related to the environment and this reference, and the second dimension only matters probably environment 4. This environment 4 is not a variable itself, it's, are the levels are the levels of uh, this variable here. So you can see that when you're plotting uh, separately quantitative variables and qualitative variables, you can see what is inside this, these factors. And when you have different levels for the factor, the, then this way of representing data is more I would say more colorful because now you can see that not only the variable matters, but the level inside that variable is what matters. <coughs> Sorry. Let's take a look at individuals, FPs, FMD, individuals, and now the object that we've created. And now you can see that we have different wines. I don't know a word about wines, but now you can see that there is some strong correlation between the categorical variables. So you can see that these wines, T1 and T2, are correlated with this environment 4. And that means that if this dimension is represented by this categorical variable, or, or better said, by the level environment 4 of this categorical variable, then you can classify, you can cluster together different wines according to that, to that address. And going back to clustering, actually we can plot some, some ellipses. Sorry, FPs. I think this is the syntax. Press, F and D. Okay. And as labels, we're going to use the label of the wine and the other category variable was soil. Okay. And now let's say repel equals true because it's a small data set. And here we go. So let me make a zoom of this. So now what I'm doing here is using different colors for different levels of the categorical variable. As I'm using a couple of categories, you can see that I have different plots. And, in, and focusing on, on the brand, on the label of, of, of the wine, you cannot see much differences, so everything seems to be more or less clustered together. But when you introduce this label of soil, you can see that you have a cluster here. You cannot see the ellipse there because you only have two points. But you have an ellipse here, so you have an automatic clustering of the, those regarding the level environment for of the categorical variable soil. And the other variables are more or less uh, uh, separated because you can see that you have an ellipse right here which is almost without overlap with this other one and with other one. So again, introducing categorical variables are going to uh, improve a little bit better our clustering. And you can do this simply leaving those categorical variables apart or including them in the analysis. Well, let's go back a little bit. So let's plot only quantitative variables. And again, I I'm not going to focus much in this one, but you can see that this is a very good candidate for doing very max rotation. Why is that? because I have a continuous of arrows from dimensions from, from this quadrant to this quadrant. So I would prefer to have a cluster of arrows here and a cluster of arrows there. And of course, one way to check that is looking at the contribution of different variables. So let's say contrib. And I have, here you can see that I'm going to use the, the variable res FMAD, and then I have to choose what I want to check. So I'm going to start with variables, then quantitative variables, qualitative variables. So let's do that. Press FMAD, and now I'm going to use variables. So here you can see that in the first dimension, you have tons of variables that are relevant, from harmony to, let's say, astringency. If you take a look at the second axis, axis 2, then we have less relevant variables. That th The reason why is because soil was predating all the variance in that direction. And if we take the first three axes, which were the ones that we chose using this elbow method, you can see that soil, of course, is going to be super relevant. And then mm, I would say that I could cut a threshold here. So maybe fruity is the last one that I'm going to use. And from fruity to this, uh, this other variables, all of them are going to be relevant. And so we could, in, in this case, in which we have tons of information, which is redundant. And actually, you can see that in the correlation plot. I think it's better to stop the analysis, uh, repeat the analysis using a less number of them, because otherwise interpretation is going to be really hard. Let me show you another example, in this case to, to illustrate the idea that if the, the variables are not correlated enough, this sort of analysis are not going to reduce dimensionality that much. So I'm going to use the library psych, and this is data set called BFI, sorry, BFI. You take a look at the data, this is the classical personality test. So you have different questions, and the questions are categorical variables. So A1 is the question, I'm indifferent to feelings of others, so, so the typical psychological stuff. 
we'll not prove deeply into a subject, and then we have gender, education, which is categorical, and the only, the only numerical one is age in years. So if, you look, take a look, if we take a look at the data, you see that we have a lot of NAs here and there, and the data is classified as, as integer numbers. So this should be factors because there are questions to the answers to these questions, but they are treated as numerical ones. So I'm going to clean a little bit the data set. So this is a kind of I know summary of all the things that we have learned during this course. PFI. And I'm going to apply the function as factor to, to, to the data. Now all the data columns should be factors. I'm going to transform this into a data frame. Of course, I can combine different functions in the same call, but, but I think this is clear. And now let's take a look at the data. Okay, and now let's pl let's put age again as a category, as a numerical variable, sorry. As numeric uh, data dot h. Okay, now let's repeat the analysis, fmat. This is the name of the variable, so this is irrelevant, okay. I want to call it result and then the, the algorithm. MD, I'm going to take uh, data. I'm going to say to not plot, to not display any graph because it's going to take longer. So here we go. Now, as usual, let's explore the eigenvalues. So FB's eigenvalues rest FMAD. And you can see that this is not dropping that fast. So let's repeat the analysis. And I'm going to use now, let's say, 15 factors. And here, is, here you go. So here, here we have an elbow, the elbow is around 4. But you can see that after that, all the dimensions are not dropping that fast. Okay, so probably 4 dimensions are okay. And now let's take a look at the correlations. Again, let's load this library just in case. Core plot, rest, FMAD variables coordinates and here is the, the thing that i wanted to show you so you can see that of course all the dimensions in this case are size factors but this is a, a, a kind of side effect of using categorical variables but i'm not interested in that i'm interested in the idea that almost we don't have any cycle which is strong enough in each of the dimensions maybe in dimension three but you can see that the cycles are pretty i would say transparent in, in, in this representation. And what's the meaning of that? The meaning of that is that there are not a strong correlations between dimensions and variables. And this is a good sign for, for, for a design of a questionnaire. When you have a questionnaire in which different questions are giving you different answers, that means that all the questions are relevant. So this is a good sign. But the side effect is that we cannot reduce dimensionality that much. Of course, of, we can drop dimensions from five to uh, five and above because we saw in this first diagram that the dimension was dropping that fast but we cannot reduce dimensionality that much so if you actually plot fmad uh, let's say variables fmad you can see that we, we don't see any dimension going uh, strongly correlated with within of the of the initial variables and again this is not meaning i'm not meaning that uh, factor analysis is not good enough what i'm saying is that for this sort of data set in which each item in the questionnaire is not correlated with the others, you cannot reduce dimensionality that much. And this is not wrong, this is life. So what I'm saying here is that this is good for the questionnaire, this is good for psychology, and this is bad for us because we wanted to reduce dimensionality. Okay, but sometimes you cannot win.